Hi booktube! I'm back after uh, not making videos since September um, and we're not going to discuss it. We're just going to hop right into the best books of 2017. Um, the first spot is the, of the best books is tied between two books because I couldn't make up my mind. Um, but I think one slightly out edges the other and that's Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Uh, this is like Canterbury Tales in space. So we have six pilgrims um, that are on their way to meet this thing called a Shrike. And the Shrike is um, either going to kill them or give them something they want. Um, and like in the Canterbury Tales where we get the individual stories, we get the individual stories of these six different people. We get a priest um, telling a story of first contact, we get a military science fiction, we get a detective story, a hedonistic poet story, a family story of a, a scholar and his daughter, and a kind of love story almost. Um, the reason why this is the best book of the year is because of the different writing styles, just the technicality of that alone. Um, each story is told as if it was written by a different author. Um, so the the technicality and the, um, the the skill of Dan Simmons in being able to do that is what made this um, one of the the best books. Also the world building was done through all these different people who all just they live on different planets but they all kind of live within the same system and sharing technology so you get this fantastic method of world building um that's not just info dumps it's kind of done really organically um and interestingly um and what this book does i think is proves that science fiction is not just about space and aliens and robots it's about human stories because that's what you really get here is the stories of the people um what it means to be human um which um so that core aspect of science fiction in my opinion plus the um the the the, the writing styles and the different stories because it's like a story of first contact it's a detective story it's a romance story it's a family saga um those different styles, I think this works as a great introduction to science fiction and definitely recommend it. Um, next on the list is The Heart is a Lonely Hunter um, by Carson McCullers, just because it's beautiful. This is a story of five very different individuals living in the same uh, southern United States town, small town in the 1930s. Um, we have a deaf mute man. Um, we have a tomboy girl, uh, I think she's, at most, she's probably 12 years old. Um, we have an alcoholic union man, we have an owner of a diner, and we have a black doctor. And so they all seem like quite different people, but Carson McCullers is just able to um, connect them, not just physically, but, but through their um, themes and their feelings and their emotions. Um, yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. The writing's beautiful. The characters are beautiful. The emotions and the experiences and everything about this book is is, is beautiful um, and astounding. Uh, the rest of my list is in no particular order. They're just books that stood out to me this year. Uh, so, Familiar Volume 1, One Rainy Day in May by Mark Z. Danilevsky, because I have to include a Danilevsky if I read it. Um, this is a story told... I seem to really like these different characters and different perspectives. There's nine different perspectives in this one. Um, and it's uh, the central story is about a girl finding a cat. Um, and then these other things that are going on. Um, but it's it's not really the plot um, that that is the reason why it's on here. It's because of the technicality. Again, um, writing is the utmost for me in, in a good book. If the writing's not there, it's not going to make it on the list. Um, so, um, the different ways that he plays with words on the on the page, um, especially um, using the different languages and everything too, is really quite cool and really engaging. Um, and most particularly because of the way he was able to capture someone's thought process, it's a, a coder um, that he's doing this with, and the thought process is I was like this this is how people think. We don't think in full, fluid, linear sentences. We think in fragments and in, you know, think about this later and this is going on, we got a word over here. And 
it was just amazing how it was done. I was like, that is the first time I've actually seen the, the thought process um, laid out on the page in the way that I actually think, at least. Um, and then next is Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. This is a classic for a reason. Um, it sounds like a romance, but it's not. It's not about love between geeks um, in the modern sense. Uh, geeks is referring to what we would now call circus freaks. Um, so this man and woman own this carnival and they start experimenting with drugs and different chemicals um, to have children that are deformed in different ways. Um, and it's from the perspective of one of the children growing up um, that way and I really do like bad characters. I love bad fictional people. Um, and I also love the complexity that Dunn does in this book um, where she's able to have these people be horrible and do horrible things but you still kind of feel for them, kind of root for them and understand um, why they're doing what they're doing. Um, and it's just, it was really good. And next up is Wittgenstein's Mistress uh, by Markson. Um, this, on the surface, <laughs> this is the story of a woman who's uh, convinced that she's the last person alive on earth and kind of her going about her daily life. Um, but it's about a lot more than that. Um, it's about philosophy and it really messes with your mind because even though it's a short book, you spend a lot of time trying to piece together whether she's insane or whether she is actually the last person alive. Um, and then trying to uh, reconcile the story and the plot and the character with the philosophy that's presented. Um, so it talks a lot about solipsism, obviously, which is, you know, you're the only thing that you can know is real. Everything that happens is happening solely for you, um, kind of on a very basic level. You're gonna have to research it if you want to know more yourself. It's also talking about the role of language and thought, um, questioning what is reality, um, and just the technical aspects of the writing. Do I need to go on about that? Um, yeah. Um, next up is, I wrote down just a memory of light, but Basically, I finished the Wheel of Time series in 2017, and I could not not include it on this list. Um, these were initially written by Robert Jordan. He passed away, and Brandon Sanderson um, took his notes and wrote the last three books. It's a 14-book epic fantasy about uh, this world in which women are able to channel and weave and do kind of magic. It's a magic system. Men who can channel tend to go mad, except for our main character, Rand, who is fulfilling this prophecy of being the dragon reborn. Um, and so it's just, it's such an amazing series. The depth that Jordan was able to go into in exploring his characters, um, a lot of people tend to complain because the middle books kind of drag plot-wise, but you really get in tune with the characters. Um, and so I had to include it on my best of list. Uh, and lastly is a graphic novel um, that was written before graphic novels were a thing. Um, it's The Cage by Martin Vaughn James, who's a Canadian. Um, and basically it's an image and then there's words underneath it. So it's not like speech bubbles and stuff because there's no actual people in this. Um, and if I had to, if I had a gun to my head and I had to try and explain what it was about, what my theory is, is that it's, it's a person who's wrote a journal about maybe being the last person on Earth and then the slow destruction of Earth. So it begins off with things just kind of being disorganized and then kind of plants take over and then kind of everything just starts literally like floating all over the place and being destroyed. Um, and then they wrote that journal on loose leaf, dropped it, someone found it and, you know, stuck it all together in whatever order it was, and there's the cage. Um, but that's not really <laughs> what it's about, that's just kind of how I would try and explain what it's about. Um, 
And I know it, it seems like I'm talking a lot of gibberish, but if you read the introduction, who's, which was written by a scholar of Martin Von James, who wrote his PhD on the cage, and if you read uh, Martin Von James himself, and they say there's no way to understand this, it's just surrealism. But what I really enjoyed about it is that it asked the reader to participate, to actively try to make sense of what is going on, and to come to the conclusion that you have to sit with that uncomfortableness of not understanding. Um, and I really liked it for that reason. Um, so that's my best books of 2017. Not as many as some years, um, but still the, the standouts. Uh, so let me know what the best book you read in 2017 was, and thank you for watching.